everyone. Today we'll be discussing a small yet a very important topic from the subject of periodontology and that is junctional epithelium and dentogingival unit. Now, this is actually an extract from the basic chapter of periodontium but we'll be doing a detailed video about periodontium in a later session. Now in this video let's just concentrate on junctional epithelium. So let's get started. Junctional epithelium is basically a stratified squamous non-keratinizing epithelium. Okay, so this is a very important point that you have to note that it is a non-keratinizing epithelium and it surrounds a tooth like a collar. Okay, and it faces both the gingival connective tissue and the tooth surface. Now, this is the reason why junctional epithelium is given so much of importance that it is facing both a hard tissue that is the tooth surface as well as it is facing the connective tissue. Now I'll explain that with the help of a picture. Now look at this picture okay. This is your junctional epithelium this portion and it is facing both the tooth on one side and the connective tissue on the other side. So this is what we said in the first slide. It is facing both the tooth and the connective tissue. Now this the portion over here the top is gingival sulcus okay so this is the gingival sulcus and the epithelium that is lining the gingival sulcus is automatically the sulcular epithelium okay so from the base of the gingival sulcus that is from here entirely it is the junctional epithelium this entire portion is the junctional epithelium now this is again to show you the same concept. See here is the gingival sulcus. So this will be the base of the sulcus. So until here it is your sulcular epithelium. But the portion over here, this entire portion is your junctional epithelium. Okay, that it is facing both the tooth on one side and it is facing your gingival connective tissue on the other side. These are all the same uh, pictures to just make the idea of junctional epithelium very clear okay here is your junctional epithelium you can draw any one of these diagrams for your exams okay it's a very simple diagram to draw now how is the junctional epithelium being formed the junctional epithelium is formed by the confluence of oral epithelium and reduced enamel epithelium at the time of your tooth eruption Again, very, very important point to note. The junctional epithelium is formed by the confluence of oral epithelium and your reduced enamel epithelium. Now, one another important point here is the reduced enamel epithelium, right? The reduced enamel epithelium is not always an essential prerequisite for the formation of junctional epithelium. Why do we say so? Because junctional epithelium is completely restored after your pocket instrumentations or your surgical procedures or it is also formed around an implant. So from that we can understand that reduced enamel epithelium is not always an essential prerequisite. Okay, So this is a pictorial representation to just tell you how this junctional epithelium is being developed. See here is a reduced enamel epithelium. Okay, Here is your reduced enamel epithelium. And then here is your oral epithelium, right? Your oral epithelium. So now the tooth is coming up. That is the tooth is erupting. Okay. And as it is erupting, what happens? Look at this portion here. The confluence of both the reduced enamel epithelium and the oral epithelium now forms your junctional epithelium. As the tooth is erupting, what happens? They both fuse. The oral epithelium and the reduced enamel epithelium fuse and there you get your junctional epithelium. So that is the development of junctional epithelium. Okay. Now the attachment of junctional epithelium to the tooth surface is reinforced by something that are called as your gingival fibers. Okay. So that functional unit, that is that combination of junctional epithelium along with your gingival fibers it is considered as a functional unit and that is what is called as your dentogingival unit. You just have to remember that it is the combination of both your junctional epithelium and gingival fibers what you call as your dentogingival unit. Now let's come back to junctional epithelium again. Junctional epithelium is actually 3 to 4 cell layers thick in your early life. 
but the number of layers will keep increasing as your age increases okay and the junctional epithelium actually has a tapering shape okay it tapers off in the apical direction which means there are more cells coronally and there are less cells apically so the more cells coronally means there are around like 10 to 29 cell layers coronally and there are like 1 to 2 cell layers apically and the total length of junctional epithelium is around 0.25 to 1.35 mm okay i'll show you a picture again see this is how you always draw junctional epithelium coronally it is more wide because it has more cells there i told you 10 to 29 cell layers whereas when it comes a pikel it is always tapered because there are just see there are just one or two cell layers there and the total length of your junctional epithelium is always around 0.25 to 1.35 mm okay now let's move on from the first slide itself i'm telling you junctional epithelium is so special because it is facing both your tooth surface and your connective tissue right so how does it do that junctional epithelium is gaining that attachment with the help of something that is called as basal lamina and there are two basal laminas there is an internal basal lamina and there is an external basal lamina okay so the junctional epithelium is attaching to your tooth surface by the means of internal basal lamina and it is gaining attachment to your connective tissue your gingival connective tissue by the means of external basal lamina okay again i'll show you a picture this is very simple see this is your junctional epithelium right and so this is your internal basal lamina that is gaining attachment to the tooth surface that is your internal basal lamina and this portion is your external basal lamina this one okay the one that is facing your connective tissue is your external basal lamina so it's very easy to remember right uh, the internal basal lamina is gaining attachment to the tooth surface and your external basal lamina is gaining attachment to your connective tissue so you can remember as that as a it easy or it is easy right it ec internal basal lamina with the tooth surface and external basal lamina with the connective tissue okay this is again uh, a little more detailed picture again showing the same concept this is your junctional epithelium okay this is your junctional epithelium and your internal basal lamina towards the tooth surface your external basal lamina towards the connective tissue now among these two internal basal lamina and external basal lamina this internal basal lamina has a little special characteristics like it is consisting of two layers there is a lamina densa and there is a lamina lucida very easy as the name suggests the lamina densa is an electron dense layer and lamina lucida is an electron lucent layer and they are attaching themselves to the tooth surface right and they do that with the help of hemidesmosomes hemidesmosomes you have to remember this point okay hemidesmosomes and they lack type 4 collagen whereas the external basal lamina has the same structure and composition as other basement membranes elsewhere in the body now your junctional epithelium actually it can also be described in terms of three layers okay like there's an apical layer there's a middle layer and there's a coronal layer and they say that the apical layer has germinative characteristics your middle layer has adhesiveness and your coronal zone or the coronal layer shows greater permeability okay that is this can be your coronal portion this is your middle portion and this is your apical portion so they say coronally it has more permeability whereas in the middle portion it shows more adhesiveness and towards the apical portion it shows more germinative characteristics so you can remember it as something like page or something right p a g permeability adhesiveness and germinative characteristics so in conclusion we can say that it is usually accepted that the junctional epithelium exhibits several unique structural and functional features that it contributes to preventing pathogenic bacterial flora from colonizing the subgingival tooth surface this is the main function of your junctional epithelium that it prevents pathogenic bacterial flora from entering into the subgingival tooth surface 
So how does it do that? Because junctional epithelium is firmly attached to your tooth surface, right? So it acts like an epithelial barrier against your plaque bacteria. And the second way is it allows the access of your gingival fluid, inflammatory cells and also your immunological host defense to enter into your gingival margin. And finally, the junctional epithelium has a special characteristic of rapid turnover and thereby it will help to maintain that host parasite equilibrium and it will help you for the rapid repair of damaged tissue. So even if there are some damaged tissues, this junctional epithelium will help you to repair it very easily. Okay. Okay. So with that, we have come to an end of a small yet a very important topic that is junctional epithelium. So these are just the previous year questions that has been asked like describe the structure of junctional epithelium which we did in detail and add a note on its role in health. Okay, These were the last slides that we discussed right like how it prevents the pathogenic bacteria from entering into your gingival sulcus. Then we also learned what is a dentogingival unit right that a functional unit of junctional epithelium along with your gingival fibers and how uh, the junctional epithelium is being developed, right? The confluence of oral epithelium and the reduced enamel epithelium. Okay, so I've taken my references from Karanza's Clinical Periodontology, 2nd South Asian edition. Now please get back to your textbooks and have a good read. And if you found our video informative, please do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel. And also, Please press the bell icon so that you get notified every time we upload a new video. Thank you.